Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, I got my uh, 440 jug in the mail that I bought off eBay with a damaged plug hole. And uh, somebody, you can see how big the, the plug hole is. Somebody has tried to put, um, typically I keep these kits on hand. I've, I've had tremendous luck, luck with these uh, style inserts. I will, you know, tap them out with that. Uh, degrease this. I'll put sleeve retainer on this, put it in there, let it set up, and then I'll use this tool and tunk it in. Well, somebody has already done that to this cylinder and then stripped the insert threads out. So not only is the plug threads gone, any chance of putting an insert in there is done. And sometimes if the threads aren't too bad, you can tap the plugs out to an NPT uh, 3 8 go down to the hardware and pick one of these up, cut it off, uh, drill this out to the right size, tap it, and, and put one of these in sometimes. Uh, it is not going to be the case uh, with this one because it's, it's already too, too big. You can't run the tap all the way in. You need to leave it tapered. So that, that's not going to work. And then... Uh, Another option I was going to do, because I thought about welding up the combustion chamber, was just come in here and just take weld a bunch of material in here and then weld up the combustion chamber, uh, re-drill, tap, and uh, do all that. But it's got a fairly small combustion chamber uh, as it is, so I don't, don't think I want to do that. And then uh, I looked around in my fitting piles here. Uh, Here's a 14 millimeter plug tap. I can't use that one, but here's this hydraulic adapter that's got uh, the next size, this is half inch, and I can tap that. So I think what I'm gonna do is put this in here. I think I'll uh, spray some lube on that and I will get threads in that piece and then I'll cut that piece off and then we'll build the insert out of that so uh, let me pause you guys and get that tapped and I'll bring you back well, I can't find my tap oil but I'll use this three in one put a little dab or do and a few of these uh, I found this in a box of stuff a while ago dollar 49 for that um, I don't even want to know what that cost because that this cost 10 bucks today and uh then a little tiny tube of uh, sleeve retaining loctite was uh 14 bucks it's uh ridiculous i couldn't find i loaned one of my taps out and then i couldn't find my normal long 14 millimeter taps so i went down and bought this Irwin one curious to see it seems to be cutting pretty good but I don't think this is hardened steel I think when it happens probably soft steel I don't know it's tapping pretty good I like trying to stay as centered as I can and I like going a few threads and then I like to back cut it because you can feel it cut the chip right off and then that way you know you don't bind your tap up. This is straight through so I should be able to So this is one of them tricks I, I was telling you guys about that I sometimes do on plug holes. Take it for what you will. I just know I'd rather fix a plug hole on an OEM cylinder that I bought for, I think it was like $48 or whatever off eBay instead of buying a $40 Chinesium kit. I'll take my chances. Uh, doing this. It feels like it's going through, maybe. 
All kinds of chips are dropping. I'm sure I'm way past where I need to be. Yep. Alrighty, that went well. I'm going to pause you guys. All I'm going to do is uh, cut that off and then I got to find my half inch pipe tap to get ready to tap the cylinder. Alright, all I did was hacksaw this off. I'm going to go try to find a long shanked automotive spark plug that I can thread into this and then I can put this on my lathe and then true that up. Well, I'll bring you back. All right, I got you set up over here. I got to walk around. All it is is a spark plug uh, that I got in the chuck, and then I just just threaded this piece onto it. That's all that is. It's just a just a spark plug. Okay, I got that nice and nice and true. I don't know how much I'll have to trim off it yet, but uh, that should be a a good start. I'll take it over there and show you. All I did was cut that flush. I know it's square to my threads. Uh, so let me pause you and then I'll bring you back. Alrighty guys, I found a half inch uh, NPT tap and I don't have the square thing that I would like to have. I've got one but it's way too small. I don't have the square thing that I'd like to that would be out here where I could balance that real good. So what I use is a square, square socket and uh, I don't know what you want to call these. Uh, I use it for a lathe truck too but we're going to we're going to try to roll with this. I already got it lubed up. This is a really sharp tap. I'm hoping that it's going to go. It feels like it's going to go. I'll put a little bit more lube on now. Can't over a little bit. Now when you're cutting these, you 
you don't want to go too far in with a NPT tap because they're tapered the 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 threads they're, they're tapered they're not straight in uh, they do like a wedge in effect And you don't want to be in a hurry when you're doing this. I mean, this tap's ginormous, so I'd have to really be doing something stupid to break this, this size of a tap. But I'm sure it can still be done. Loaded up with chips. Awesome. Let me blow it out with some brake cleaner, I guess. The flutes are all filled up. There we go. go a little bit more. I'll put more lube on. you guys what I did was uh wouldn't degrease this and then wire wheeled this up off camera I haven't touched anything here yet so let me grab a spark plug I guess I'll wire wheel that up too. Just get all the oil and chips off it let's see and I still got to run that tapping uh, deeper. So, all right, what to do with the tap? Clean that off. Take it in stages because I don't want to over overshoot it and have that. Uh, insert uh go too far in okay, just leave up two you know, three sides with my flashlight I wanted to show you guys let me get my flashlight just a second well I had to look all over for my flashlight 
But uh, let's see if I can get you guys on this. See where it stopped? That's just with my fingers. It'll poke. It'll crunch in there a little bit more. But now I gotta uh, count the threads out here and see how much I gotta take off that insert. So I'm gonna go work on that, and then I'll bring you guys back. Alrighty, guys. Uh, this is tightened in there fairly good. I chemically degreased this and this. I have a light coating of oil on the spark plug threads just to prevent any sleeve retainer from getting in there. This stuff's pretty pretty wicked stuff. Um, I'm going to put a few dabs in here. Put just a little bit. there and you don't want to mess around about getting this in there set this on the stove and uh, I'll bring you back when I, uh, that sets up for a minute and I'll get that plug out alrighty guys uh, all I did was let it sit on the oven it's cooled down quite a bit uh, and I broke the plug free I did use an impact for that because I didn't because this is a, a tapered uh, fit plug. I didn't want it to uh, pull the insert out. It seems how it's fresh. But uh, let's uh, take a pick and let's see how close I got. It's pretty much in there. It's pretty much in there permanently now. Alright, let's grab a flashlight and show you guys. It protrudes just a smidgen in, but it's not gonna it's it's below the the thing and then I'm gonna cut the probably end up cutting the chamber on this, so whatever's protruding out, but it's flush to the top. There's that shiny spot at the bottom. That's where one of the cutter teeth cut into the chamber a little bit. You can't you can't control that. But uh, there's one severe, heavy duty uh, thread repair. And because them threads are tapered, there's no there's no way that that insert can ever fall into the engine because it's tapered. It's it's wedged in there like a wedge. And then. This is a different number than I, I used to get. I couldn't find the stuff I used to get. The one stuff I used to get said Loctite Wicketing Grade Sleeve Retainer. This stuff's the same color though. So, but uh, it's more for permanent applications like this. But, uh, so that's how I sometimes repair a plug hole. Uh, yeah, you know, I got probably, what, an hour and a half fidgeting around and I bet most of it was me just trying to find something suitable to, to work. If I wanted to head that that thick hydraulic piece, I would have ended up either had to uh, buy a, a, a bolt or something and, and make that out of a bolt. I've done that before too. But uh, that is a, uh, and as oversized as this is, if these ever did strip out, you could tap it out and actually put one of the other inserts in. But I, I highly doubt that these threads will ever strip out. That is, compared to the factory, that is a pretty, pretty serious uh, set of threads right there. So, yeah, so now I can work on getting this cleaned up and uh, get numbers on it and then figure out what I'm going to do for porting. Because I have the 440 all laid out here uh, on the surgical table. Uh, I'm going to start on this today. So, 
all right uh, you guys take it easy have a good one I hope this helps someone out uh, maybe next time I gotta put a thread insert in uh, I'll show you guys how I do that typically them thread inserts work good whoever put that thread insert in probably didn't do it right is why it failed so but uh, I repaired it successfully so let me know what you guys think of that repair you guys take it easy and have a good one